What do plant hardiness zone numbers mean? Plant hardiness zones are another way numbers are used. In this case, they indicate the average annual minimum temperatures for land masses around the world. For example, one common plant hardiness zone map is broken down into 20 different zones based on the average annual minimum temperatures. In zone 5A, for example, the average annual minimum temperature ranges from minus 20 to minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Minus 26.2 to minus 28.8 degrees centigrade, for example, Des Moines, Iowa. In Zone 11, such temperatures are above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. 4.5 degrees centigrade, for example, Honolulu, Hawaii. And in Zone 1, such temperatures are below minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Minus 45.6 degrees centigrade, for example, Fairbanks, Alaska. There are other maps, too, that break down the zones into even more detail. What is a linear differential equation? A linear differential equation is a first-order differential equation that has no multiplications among the dependent variables and their derivatives, which means the coefficients are functions of independent variables. Other terms associated with such differential equations are nonlinear differential equations which have multiplications among the dependent variables and their derivatives. And quasi-linear differential equations, in which a nonlinear differential equation has no multiplications. Among all the dependent variables and their derivatives in the highest derivative term, How does a person calculate the amount of a tip? A tip, or gratuity, is the money given to a person who performs a service for a customer. Such as a waiter or waitress at a restaurant. Depending on the service, in the United States a 10% to 20% tip is usually left. With the most common being 15%. Although many people have stories about the 0% tip they left after a bad experience. The tip is based on the total bill the meal and the tax although some people base the gratuity on just the meal. For example, if a meal at a restaurant costs a total of $10, meal and taxes, a 15% tip would be $10 x 0.15 equals $1.50. The tip is usually left at the table, or given to the waiter or waitress, or taken out by the establishment and added to a tip pot shared by all the wait staff. There are some mathematical tricks to remember when leaving a tip at a restaurant. To a hairdresser, doorman, or in other appropriate circumstances. A good way to estimate a tip is to round the total bill to the most significant place value. For example, an $18.50 meal would round to $20. Next. 
move the decimal point of the rounded amount one place to the left, $20 to $2. Or 10% of the total cost. Then divide this amount in half to determine 5%, or $2.00 slash 2 equals $1. Add the two resulting amounts to estimate 15% of the total in this instance. $2 plus $1 equals $3 tip. In reality, 15% of $18.50 is $2.78, which is close enough to $3.00. But remember, not every country tips the same. Tipping is a way of life in Egypt, but taxi drivers don't accept tips, French restaurants must add the tip. Usually at 15%, to the bill by law, tipping in Australia is almost non-existent, no one tips in mainland China. Mainly because the government tax on enough charges to visitors, there is no tipping in New Zealand. Either as the price usually includes services, and don't even think about tipping in Japan. Why is there no Nobel Prize for Mathematics? The Nobel Prizes were established at the bequest of Swedish chemical engineer Alfred Bernhard Nobel. 1833 to 1896, the discoverer of dynamite. First awarded in 1901, the Nobel Prizes honor innovators in the fields of chemistry, physics, physiology or medicine, literature and peace. A prize in economics was added in 1969, but there is no award for mathematics. The lack of a mathematics prize has many stories attached. Including one that states that Nobel's wife jilted him for Norwegian mathematician Magnus Gosta Mittagleffler. A notion made less plausible by the fact that Nobel never married. Most historians agree, however, that the reason has to do with Nobel's attitude toward mathematics. He simply did not consider mathematics sufficiently practical. To fill the gap, the Fields Medal of the International Mathematical Congress was established in 1932. It has the equivalent prestige of the Nobel with the limitation that it is only awarded for work done by mathematicians younger than 40 years old, and the monetary value is a mere $15,000 in Canadian dollars, or about $12,000 in US dollars at press time. But mathematics has not been left out of award-winning ceremonies. In 2003 Norway created the Abel Prize for Mathematic Achievement. Named after Norwegian mathematician Niels Henrik Abel, 1802-1829. Who proved that solving fifth-degree algebraic equations, quintics, is impossible. The award gives the winner a prize of 6 million Norwegian kroners, about $935,000 in American currency. Was mathematics always based on a logical foundation? No. Not all of mathematics was always based on a logical foundation. But some ancient cultures did develop certain aspects of logic in their thought. 
The Greeks were probably one of the first cultures to understand logic's role in mathematics and philosophy. And they studied the subject extensively. For example, geometry, as presented by Greek mathematician Euclid. C325 C270 BCE, had some foundations in logic. Greek scientist and philosopher Aristotle's, 384-322 BCE. Rules for syllogisms were also based on logic, and he wrote the first systematic treatise on logic. But his logic works were based on ordinary language making. Them a matter of interpretation and subject to ambiguities. It was not until the development of calculus that most of mathematics was put on a logical foundation. By the 17th century, people such as German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz 1646 to 1716 began to demand a more regular and symbolic way to express logic. Logic truly became a part of mathematics around the mid-19th century. Especially with the 1847 publication of English mathematician George Boole's 1815-1864, the mathematical analysis of logic and English mathematician Augustus de Morgan's 1806-1871, formal logic. Thus, mathematics began to encompass symbolic logic with precise rules to manipulate those symbols. See below for more about symbolic logic. Of course, nothing is perfect. Although mathematicians in the late 19th and early 20th centuries hoped it would be. They believed that all of mathematics could be described using symbolic logic and made purely formal. But in the 1930s, Austrian-American mathematician and logician Kurt Gödel, 1906-1978, put a damper on such an idea by showing that not all truths could be derived by a formal logic system. What other variables are often used in statistics? When an experiment is conducted, variables manipulated by the experimenter are called independent variables. Also independent factors. While others measured from the subjects are called dependent variables, also dependent measures. For example, consider a hypothetical experiment on the effect of lack of sleep on reaction time. Subjects either stayed awake, slept for 2 hours for every 24, 5 hours. For every 24, or 8 hours for every 24, they then had their reaction times tested. The independent variables would be the hours slept by each person and the dependent variables would be the reaction time. Some variables can be measured on a continuous scale a continuous variable being one that within the limits the variable ranges can take on any value possible. For example, we can make the time to eat a lunch at a certain restaurant be the continuous variable because it can take any number of minutes or hours to finish the meal. But other variables can only take on a limited number of values or dependent variables. For example, if the variables were a test score from 1 to 10, then only those 10 possible values would be allowed, 
these are called discrete variables. What are the square and square roots? When you multiply a real or complex number by itself, you are actually squaring that number. Mathematicians express the square of a number using the superscript 2, or For example, 22. The square of a real number is always positive. Whether the number is 22, equals 4, or minus 22, equals 4, a negative times a negative equals a positive real number. A square root is a number that when multiplied by itself equals a specific product. For example, if t2 equals s, then t equals plus or minus vs, in which t is the square root and s is a positive number. For example, the two square roots of 16, v1-6, are 4 and minus 4, as 42 equals 16 and minus 42 equals 16. What is Euler's method? Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, 1707-1783, was one of the most prolific mathematicians who ever lived. He developed Euler's method, which is a way of determining the largest divisor of two numbers. For example, if we want to find the largest DVSOR of the numbers 6,975 and 525, we consider one to be the large number and the other the small number. Are there different types of functions? Yes, there are different types of functions so many. In fact, that the topic of functions is a book in itself. In particular, algebraic equations include polynomial and rational expression functions. For example, polynomial equations include linear, first degree, functions, such as f, x equals 2x, a quadratic, second degree, function example is f, x equals x2. But algebraic and polynomial functions are not the only use of the term function so don't get confused. There are also non-algebraic functions called exponential functions. And the inverses of exponential functions, which are called logarithmic functions. Set theory emphasizes the use of functions, for more about functions and sets, see Foundations of Mathematics. And there are trigonomic functions that include the relationships of sine, cosine, and tangent functions, for more information about trigonometry, see Geometry and Trigonometry. There also are continuous or discontinuous functions, transcendental functions, and even real and complex functions, all this may or may not be connected to algebra. The list goes on, but it is easy to see that mathematicians love the word function. How did the concept of zero evolve over time?
the concept of zero developed because it was necessary to have a placeholder or a number that holds a place to make it easier to designate numbers in the tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. For example, the number 4000 implies that the three places to the right of the four are empty with only the thousandths column containing any value. Because zero technically means nothing. At first few people accepted the concept of nothing between numbers. Not that all cultures ignored the possibility of such an idea. For example, Hindu mathematicians, who wrote their math in verse, used words similar to nothing, such as sunya, void, and akaza, space. It is thought that the Babylonians were the first to have a placeholder in their numbering system. But not a zero, instead, it appears they used other symbols. Such as a double hash mark, also called wedges, as a placeholder. Archaeologists believe a crude symbol for zero probably started in Indochina or India. About the 7th century and by the Mayans independently about a hundred years earlier. While the isolated Mayans could not spread the idea of the zero, the Indians seemed to have no problem. Around 650 CE, zero became a mathematically important number in Indian. Mathematics although the symbol was a bit different than today's zero. The familiar Hindu-Arabic symbol for zero the open circle would take several more centuries to become more readily accepted. For more about zero and Hindu-Arabic symbols, see History of Mathematics and Math Basics. How did applied mathematics grow over time? Historically speaking, applied mathematics was always concerned with using mathematics to solve problems in physics. Chemistry, medicine, engineering, the physical sciences, technology, and biology. In fact, applied mathematics is older than pure mathematics. As it was used in areas that formed the core of early physics research, such as mechanics, fluid dynamics, and optics. As mathematical tools became more powerful, these areas of physics became more mathematically based. This mathematical analysis tied to science and engineering has always had a great place in history and has led to some of its greatest discoveries. How are millibars converted to inches of mercury? Mathematically, the conversion is simple. The air pressure at sea level is 29.92 inches of mercury, or 1013.2 millibars. For example, if you see air pressure of 1016 millibars on a weather map, convert to inches of mercury by multiplying by 29.92, and then divide by 1013.2. The result is 30.00 inches of mercury. What other significant mathematical contributions did the Babylonians make?
Throughout the centuries, the Babylonians made many mathematical contributions. They were the earliest people to know about the Pythagorean theorem. Although it was not known by that name. In fact, Pythagoras, in his travels to the east, may have learned about the theorem that would eventually carry his name from the Babylonians. In addition, the Babylonians possessed all the theorems of plane geometry that the Greeks ascribed to Thales, including the theorem eventually named after him. They also may have been the most skilled algebraists of their time. Even though the symbols and methods they used were much different than our modern algebraic notations and procedures. What are equations? In its simplest form, an equation is represented by expressions written with an equal sign in between. The two entities on either side are equal to each other. They are among the simplest mathematical problems most people deal with. Most people have solved equations in their daily lives without realizing it. For example, when students first learn addition in school. They typically work on equations such as, plus 5 equals 7, in which the blank needs to be filled. This problem could also be expressed as x plus 5 equals 7, a simple equation. In this case, the equation is solved when x equals 2. The following are also equations. 6 equals 6 x equals 8 y plus 8 equals 14 x 4 equals 15 x 5 x y equals 8 x y 2 plus 4 there are also some fundamental properties of equations that are good to know. They include symmetric properties, if a equals b, then b equals a, substitution, if a equals b, then a may be replaced by b, addition, if a equals b, and C is a number. Then A plus C equals B plus C, and multiplication, if A equals B, and C is a number, then AXC equals BXC. What is chance? Mathematically speaking, chance is a measure of how likely it is that an event will occur a probability. For more about chance and probability, see Applied Mathematics. What are quartic equations? Quartic equations are polynomial equations whose highest power of the unknown variable is 4. Put another way, quartic equations are algebraic equations whose highest exponent or degree or order is 4. For more about the history of solving quartic and cubic equations, see History of Mathematics. But take note, quartic equations are not the same as quadratic equations or second degree equations in one variable so don't mix them up. What is a group in abstract algebra?
A group, usually referred to as G, is a finite or infinite set of elements together with a binary operation. Often called the group operation. That together satisfy the four fundamental properties closure, associativity, and the identity and inverse properties. For more information about these properties, see elsewhere in this chapter. A great many of the objects investigated in mathematics turn out to be groups. Including familiar number systems such as the integers, rational, real, and complex numbers under addition, non-zero rational. Real, and complex numbers under multiplication, non-singular matrices under multiplication, and so on. The branch of mathematics that studies groups is called group theory. An important area of mathematics that has many applications to mathematical physics, such as particle theory. What were Archimedes's greatest contributions to mathematics? Historians consider Archimedes, c. 287 to 212 BCE, Hellenic, to be one of the greatest Greek mathematicians of the Classic era. Known for his discovery of the hydrostatic principle, he also excelled in the mechanics of simple machines. Computed close limits on the value of pi by comparing polygons inscribed in and circumscribed about a circle. Worked out the formula to calculate the volume of a sphere and cylinder. And expanded on Yudakus's method of exhaustion that would eventually lead to integral calculus. He also created a way of expressing any natural number, no matter how large. This was something that was not possible with Greek numerals. For more information about Archimedes, see Mathematical Analysis and Geometry and Trigonometry. Because it required the who were the Mesopotamians. The explanation of who the Mesopotamians were is not easy because there are many historians who disagree on how to distinguish Mesopotamians from other cultures and ethnic groups. In most texts, the label Mesopotamian refers to most of the unrelated peoples who used cuneiform. A way of writing numbers, see below including the Sumerians, Persians, and so on. They are also often referred to as Babylonians, after the city of Babylon, which was the center of many of the surrounding empires that occupied the fertile plain between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. But this area was also called Mesopotamia. Therefore, the more correct label for these people is probably Mesopotamians. In this text, Mesopotamians will be referred to by their various subdivisions. Because each brought new ideas to the numbering systems and, eventually, mathematics. These divisions include the Sumerians, Akkadians, and Babylonians. Memorization of so many signs. The Sumerians also used base 10 like steps of a ladder between the various orders of magnitude. For example, the numbers followed the sequence 1, 60, 600, and 2, 603, and so on. 
Each one of the iterations had a specific name, making the numbering system extremely complex. No one truly knows why the Sumerians chose such a high base number. Theories range from connections to the number of days in a year. Weights and measurements, and even that it was easier to use for their purposes. Today, this numbering system is still visible in the way we tell time, hours, minutes, seconds, and in our definitions of circular measurements, degrees, minutes, seconds. What is a game? A game is a recreational activity that involves a conflict resulting in gains and losses between two or more opponents. Although some games can involve one player acting alone. In general, all games must have a goal that the players are trying to reach. And the opponents must follow strict, formal rules that determine what the players can or can't do within the game. If any of the rules are broken during the game, it is often referred to as a foul or, at its worst, cheating. The study of games is also a branch of mathematics and logic that is called game theory. In game theory, games can be simple and solved with mathematics. That result in a complete solution, result of the game. It also includes the analysis of more complex games, such as cards, chess, and checkers and can even be applied to real-world situations in economics, politics, and warfare. What is set theory? Set theory is the mathematical theory of sets and is associated with logic. It is also considered the study of sets, collections of objects or entities. That can be real objects or intellectual concepts, and their properties. For more about sets, see below. Under formal set theory, three primitives. Undefined terms, are used, S, the set, I, the identity, and E, the element. Thus, the formulas SX, XE, XE mean X is a set. X is identical to Y, and X is an element of Y, respectively. Overall, set theory fits in with the aims of logic research. To find a single formula theory that will unify and become the basis for all of mathematics. As it turns out, sets lead directly to a vast amount of data encompassing all of modern mathematics. There are also a number of different set theories. Each having its own rules and axioms. No matter what version, Set theory is not only important to mathematics and logic but also to other fields. Such as computer technology and atomic and nuclear physics. How are fractions converted to decimals and vice versa? In the most commonly used place value, the decimal system. Numbers smaller than one can be expressed as fractions called decimal fractions. 
In this system, the decimal fractions are expressed in terms of tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so on. For example, for the fraction one half, or one divided by two, the decimal fraction is 0 0.5, and vice versa. The decimal fraction 0 0.5, or 5 slash 10 ths, is equal to one half. Not all fractions are so easily converted to decimals. It depends on the type of number, especially if it is an irrational or rational number. Where did the symbols plus, plus, and minus, originate? Mercantile arithmetic Originally, he used the signs and and to indicate excesses and deficits. What we would call credit and debit, in business dealings. But some historians believe the and sign initially evolved from the French et. Or and, because the written e and t resemble the and sign. Although they were probably used before in general mathematics, the first person known to have used the plus and symbols in writing algebraic expressions lived in the early 1500s, Dutch mathematician van der Hoek. The symbols finally went into general use in England when Robert records 1510-1558, also seen erroneously as record, book The Whetstone of Wit was published. This is the same book responsible for bringing the equal, smiley face, sign to the forefront of mathematics, see above. What are some transformations in geometry? A transformation that keeps a figure same shape and size. But moves it to a new location, is called asymmetry. There are several common types of these transformations. Dilatation is the only transformation that does not create equal figures. It means to take a shape and make it larger or smaller, but keep the same proportions. In terms of a circle, a dilatation creates another circle with the same center. Also known as a concentric circles. Reflection is similar to what we called a flip in. Elementary school mathematics like the flip side of an object. One easy way to see this is by noting one's reflection in a mirror the figure is on one side of a line and the mirror image on the other. Reflection twice about two parallel lines is synonymous with translation. Reflection twice about two intersecting lines is called rotation. Another type of transformation is rotation. This is simple to understand, in elementary school mathematics it is sometimes called a turn or spin. In this case, one point on a plane remains unchanged while keeping all the distances between the other points the same. Finally, a translation, or glide transformation is similar to what is called a slide in elementary school mathematics. All the points in the plane move in the same direction and the same distance. Or, the figure slides in a single direction. 
translation is also considered to be reflection twice across two parallel lines. Who first determined the value of pi? People have been fascinated by pi throughout history. It was used by the Babylonians and Egyptians, the Chinese thought it stood for 1000 years. Some even give the Bible credit for mentioning the concept of pi, in which it apparently equaled 3. In one biblical version of I Kings 7, 23-26, it states and he made a molten sea. 10 cubits from the one brim to the other, it was round all about. And his height was 5 cubits, and a line of 30 cubits did compass it about. The same verse is found in 2 Chronicles 4, 2-5 in reference to a vessel. C. Made in the Temple of Solomon, which was built around 950 BCE. No one truly knows the origins of Pi. Although many historians believe it was probably figured out long ago. There are some clues as to its discovery, though. For example, some people claim the Egyptian Rhind Papyrus, also called Ams Papyrus, which was transcribed about 1650 BCE by Ams, an Egyptian scribe who claimed he was copying a 200-year-old document. Contains a notation that pi equals 3.16, which is close to the real value of pi. For more about the Rhind Papyrus, see History of Mathematics. But it was the Greeks who promoted the idea of pi the most. They were very interested in the properties of circles, especially the ratio of a circle to its diameter. In particular, Greek mathematician Archimedes, c. 287 to 212 BCE, Hellenic. Computed close limits of pi by comparing polygons inscribed in and circumscribed about a circle. What is reliability? Industrial engineers use another type of statistical technique called reliability. A system that always produces the same results and that hopefully meets or exceeds its specifications. A product is analyzed using the reliability function, or survivor function. The probability of a unit in a system that does not fail in a certain specified time interval. If the unit does fail in a system, it means the end of the unit's ability to perform the required function. This is determined by the failure distribution function. Or the probability of an item failing in a specific time interval. Calculations involving the common failure rates of various mechanical devices often results in a graph with a bathtub shaped curve. What is the connection between calendars and math? A calendar is essentially a numbering system that represents a systematic way of organizing days into weeks, months, years, and millennia, especially in terms of a human lifespan. 
it was the necessity to count, keep track of, and organize days, months, and so on that gave rise to calendars. All of which also entails the knowledge of mathematics to make such calculations. Why do meteorologists want people to pay attention to the heat index? The major reason involves how the body responds to high heat value numbers. If the relative humidity is high, it curtails evaporation on the skin. And the body is unable to effectively cool itself, and a person will perceive that the air is warmer. When heat index values grow higher, conditions exceed the level a body can remove heat causing the body temperature to rise. This can cause heat-related illnesses, such as sunstroke or heat exhaustion. For example, according to the United States National Weather Service, exposure to direct sunlight can increase the high by up to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, 9.4 degrees centigrade. And when a heat index between a mere 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32.2 degrees centigrade, to 105 degrees Fahrenheit, 40.6 degrees centigrade, can cause possible sunstroke, heat exhaustion, and heat cramps, it is easy to see the meteorologist's concerns. The following table shows how the heat we actually experience changes with temperature and humidity. Humidity is expressed as a percentage, temperatures are in degrees Fahrenheit. According to the National Weather Service, sunstroke, heat cramps, and heat exhaustion are possible above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, Temperatures above 105 degrees can also lead to heat stroke. And above 130 degrees heat stroke is likely if exposure to such temperatures is prolonged. What is intuitionism? There are some people within philosophy and mathematics who reject the formalism of mathematics and believe in intuitionism, which says that words and formulas have significance only as a reflection of the mind's activity. Intuitionists believe that a theorem is meaningful only if it represents a mental construction of a mathematical or logical entity. This is different from the classical approach that states that the existence of an entity can be proven by refuting its non-existence. For example, if you said A or B to an intuitionist, he or she believes that either A or B can be proved. But if you said, a or not A, this is not allowed. Since you cannot assume that it is always possible to either prove or disprove statement A. What is gambling? Gambling is the act of playing a game for stakes it is thought of as the art of taking chances. It is also often called betting. A bet is the amount of money or other object of value that is risked in a wager. Most people gamble with the hope of winning a certain stake, usually a cash payment. 
But in order to get such a payoff, the gambler must risk money or valuables. Betting these items on the outcome of a game, contest, or other event. All of this depends on the outcome of activities that are partially or wholly dependent upon chance. What is relativity? Relativity refers to the idea that the velocity of an object can be determined only relative to the observer. For example, if a fly moves around the inside of a car at about 1 mile per hour. Inside the car's frame of reference, the fly is moving at 1 mile per hour. But if the car goes past you at 65 miles per hour, it will appear as if the fly is traveling at 66 miles per hour, not 1 mile per hour. In other words, it's all a matter of reference, and it's relative to your viewpoint. What was the Julian calendar? By the time of Julius Caesar, 100 to 44 BCE, Roman calendar keeping was a mess. Caesar decided to reform the Roman calendar. Asking help from astronomer and mathematician Sosagenes of Alexandria, lived c. 1 BCE, not to be confused with Sosagenes the Peripatetic c. 2nd century, an Egyptian philosopher. The year 46 BCE would consequently have 445 days a time appropriately called the year of confusion. Sosagenes began the reformed year on January 1, 45 BCE, a year with 365 days. And proposed an additional day for every fourth year in February, leap day. The alternate months of the year, January, March, May, July, September, November, had 31 days, the other months would have 30 days. In the Julian calendar, there was only one rule, every year divisible by four was a leap year. The vain heir to Caesar, Augustus Caesar, 63 BCE 14 CE, aka Gaius Octavius, Octavian. Julius Caesar Octavianus, and Caesar Augustus, would change the Julian calendar in a several ways. Not only did he name the month of August after himself, but he would change the number of days in many months to their present usage, adding more confusion to the calendar. The Julian calendar would govern Caesar's part of the world until 1582. Not that the Julian year was perfect. A year's 364.25 days was too long by 11 minutes 12 seconds. Although the difference between today's measurement of the year and the Julian year was not great. It adds up to 7.8 days over 1000 years. But as with many decrees and mandates, Caesar, Sosagenes and Octavian left it up to future generations to fix the problem. What are some paradoxes that deal with space and time?
there are numerous paradoxes that deal with the counterintuitive aspects of continuous space and time. One of the most well known is the dichotomy, or racetrack, paradox. Before an object can travel a distance d, it must keep traveling in halves. In terms of the racetrack, in order to reach the end of the course, a person would have to first reach the halfway mark. Then the halfway mark of the remaining half. Then the halfway mark of the final fourth, then of the final eighth, and so on ad infinitum, to infinity. Therefore, the distance can never truly be traveled to reach the end of the racetrack. The Achilles and the tortoise paradox is a version of the tortoise and the hare. But with a very different resolution than the well-known fable. In this paradox, Achilles gives the slower tortoise a head start. Achilles starts when the tortoise reaches point A. But by the time Achilles reaches A, the tortoise has already moved beyond that point. To point B, when Achilles reaches B, the tortoise is at point C, and so on ad infinitum. Since this process goes on forever, Achilles can never catch up with the tortoise. Another paradox is the arrow paradox. In this case, an arrow in flight has a certain position at a given instant in time. But that is indistinguishable from a motionless arrow in the same position. What was de revolutionibus orbium coalescium? In the year of his death, astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus, 1473-1543, in Polish, Myko slash Lodzka Pernik. Published De Revolutionibus Orbium Coelesium, on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres. This manuscript gave a full account of his theory that the Sun, and not the Earth, was at the center of the solar system, or universe. Although this theory was not new, Copernicus offered the idea in all its mathematical detail. This heliocentric, versus geocentric, view of the heavens. Now known as the Copernican system, is the foundation of modern astronomy. What Greek mathematician wrote the book Elements? The Greek mathematician and geometrician Euclid, c. 325 c. 270 BCE, made some of the most significant improvements to geometry in his time. For more about Euclid, see History of Mathematics and Foundations of Mathematics. One contribution was his collection of 13 books on geometry and other mathematics. Titled Elements, or Stoichion in Greek. This work has been called the world's most definitive text on geometry. The first six books offer elementary plane geometry, with sections on triangles, rectangles, circles, polygons, proportions, and similarities, the rest of the books present other mathematics of his day. Including the theory of numbers, books 7 to 10, solid geometry, pyramids, and platonic solids. These books were used for centuries in Western Europe, in fact. 
The elementary geometry many students learn in high school today is still largely based on Euclid's ideas on the subject. Why were counting devices developed? Early counting devices were developed for a logical reason. To allow people to count items in order to trade or to keep track of stock, such as cattle. They also used simple counting devices to keep track of the seasons, mostly for agriculture in other words. To know when to plant, and for religious reasons, such as marking days for certain feasts. For more about counting in ancient times, see History of Mathematics. How did the metric system originate? In 1791 the French Revolution was in full swing when the metric system was proposed as a much needed plan to bring order to the many conflicting systems of weights and measures used throughout Europe. It would eventually replace all the traditional units, except those for time and angle measurements. The system was adopted by the French Revolutionary Assembly in 1795, and the standard meter. The first metric standard, was adopted in 1799. But not everyone agreed with the metric system's use. And it took several decades before many European governments adopted the system. By 1820 Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg all required the use of the metric system. France, the originator of the system and its standards, took longer. Finally making metric mandatory in 1837. Other countries such as Sweden were even slower. They accepted the system by 1878 and took another 10 years to change from the old method to the metric. How do surveyors use mathematics? Surveyors use mathematics especially geometry and trigonometry because they need to measure angles and distances on the ground. They then interpret the data. Accurately plotting such information as boundaries and locations of structures on a map. These maps are then used for personal or legal means such as a survey of a person's lot showing ownership boundaries in order to obtain a mortgage. The traditional method of surveying is called plane surveying, which does not take into consideration the curvature of the earth because for most small projects, this curvature doesn't really matter. When it does, especially for projects measuring greater distances, the method used is called geodetic surveying. How can one visualize Pascal's triangle using algebra? One way of looking at Pascal's triangle is through its connection to algebra. For example, expand, or remove the brackets around, the expression, 1 plus x, 2 equals, 1 plus x, 1 plus x. 
equals 1 plus 2x plus x2. The same can be done with a cube, for example, 1 plus x, 3 equals, 1 plus x, 1 plus x, 1 plus x, equals, 1 plus x. 1 plus 2x plus x2, equals 1 plus 3x plus 3x2 plus x3, and even the expression, 1 plus x, 4, which equals 1 plus 4x plus 6x2 plus 4x3 plus x4. The coefficients. The numbers in front of the x's, in the results are the connection. For the first example, the coefficients are 1, 2, 1, for the second one. 1, 3, 3, 1, and for the last expression, the coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. These, of course, are the third, fourth, and fifth lines from Pascal's triangle. What is some of the earliest evidence of keeping time? No one agrees which culture, s, first invented timekeeping. Some historians and archaeologists believe that marks on sticks and bones made by ice. Age hunters in with each hour composed of 60 minutes, and each minute having 60 seconds. It is unknown why the Babylonians chose to divide by 60, also called a base number. Theories range from connections to the number of days in a year. Weights and measurements, and even that the base 60 system was somehow easier for them to use. Whatever the explanation, their methods proved to be important to us centuries later. We still use 60 as the basis of our timekeeping system, hours, minutes, seconds. And in our definitions of circular measurements, degrees, minutes, seconds. For more information about the Sumerian counting system, See History of Mathematics. What is the range of a set of numbers? The range of a sample, or data set, is used to characterize the spread or dispersion among observations in a given population. As it is the distance between the highest and lowest numbers. In statistics, it is often, logically, referred to as the statistical range. Numerically, it is represented by the highest score minus the lowest score. For example, for the range of the numbers 34, 84, 48, 65, 92, and 22, the range is 92, 22 equals 70. What is a mortgage? A mortgage is a method of using property as security for the repayment of a loan. It is based on a 14th century coinage of a Latin word meaning dead pledge. The interpretation was that the property was dead to the borrower if he defaulted on the debt. And the pledge was dead to the lender after the loan was repaid. For centuries, it's been figured out using mathematics. How is mathematics used to enable buildings to withstand earthquakes?
it is not usually the quake that kills people, but the collapse of structures. In particular, the horizontal shaking during a quake is mostly responsible for causing building or road damage and collapse. Most structures are designed to carry heavy loads, so they are strong in the vertical direction. Designing structures to withstand a horizontal earthquake shaking can save buildings and lives. There may be other ways to mitigate the amount of structural collapse. During quakes all include a healthy dose of simple and complex mathematics. One expensive way would be to design all buildings to withstand the largest ground shaking an area can expect. This could be done using mathematics familiar to designers and engineers. The math involved analyzes how large quake frequency waves travel through an area. Yet another, more practical, solution might be to design buildings. To withstand the specific types of shaking expected in a region. Again, mathematics could be used to determine the frequency at which each building vibrates. Or the number of times a building sways per second, versus the potential type of quakes that roll through the area. What happened to the Babylonians? After the Amorites, a Semitic people, founded Babylon, there were several dynasties that ruled the area. Including those associated with the famous king and lawmaker, Hammurabi, 1792-1750 BCE. It was periodically taken over. Including in 1594 BCE by the Kassites and in the 12th century BCE by the Assyrians. Through all these conquests, most of the Babylonian culture retained its own distinctiveness. With the fall of the Assyrian Empire in 612 BCE, the Babylonian culture bloomed. At least until its conquest by Cyrus of Persia in 539 BCE. It eventually died out a short time after being conquered by Alexander the Great, 356-323 BCE. In 331 BCE, ironically, Alexander died in Babylon, unable to recover from a fever he contracted. What is the identity matrix? The identity matrix is the n by n matrix that has all ones down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else, it must also be a square. What is symbolic logic? Symbolic logic, also called formal logic, is mainly concerned with the structure of reasoning. It determines the meaning and relationship of statements used to represent specific mathematical concepts and provides a means to compose proofs of statements. Symbolic logic draws most notably on set theory. It uses variables combined by operations such as NOT or AND and assigns symbols to them, AND AND, respectively.
How do astronomers determine the distances to other planets? Astronomers need mathematics, of course. To determine the distances to the planets and satellites of our solar system. One of the first astronomers to work this out was Nicolaus Copernicus. See above, using simple observations of planetary positions. One of the earliest methods to determine such distances was to use the orbital period of a planet. This varies as the square root of the cube of the distance from the Sun. T equals KXR, 3 halves, in which T is the time for one revolution. R is the distance between the centers of the Sun and the planet, and K is a constant. What are some life questions you can figure out using math? There are many questions you can explore about your own body and age with mathematics. For example, approximately how many Sunday nights can you expect to sleep until you are 100 years old? Just take 100 years, minus your current age. And multiply that result by 52, weeks in a year with a Sunday. For example, if you are 25, the answer would be, 125, x 52 equals 3. 900 how many of those will be good night sleep is up to you. To calculate the number of times your heart has beaten since you were born. You need the help of a watch or clock. First, time your heart beats per minute, to find out how to count your pulse, see everyday math. Then multiply beats per minute x 60 minutes, in an hour, x 24 hours, in a day x 365.25 days, in a year, x your age. For example, 72 heartbeats x 60 x 24 x 365.25 x a person who is 30 equals 1,136,073. beats since the person was born. Of course, this is an approximation, since the heart usually beats slower at night. And it speeds up when you see the bill for your latest car repair. Figuring out how much air you breathe during a lifetime is another fun mathematical calculation. If you optimistically decide you want to eventually be 100 years old, and the average person inhales about 1 pint, or 0.47 liters, of air per breath, you can do the math. First take the number of breaths you take while at rest per minute, say about 21 per minute. x 0.47 liters x 60 minutes x 24 hours x 365.25 days x 100 years old equals 519,122,520 liters. Again, this is only an approximation. Who developed the mathematical equations that explain electricity and magnetism? One of the major early works about electricity and magnetism was written by Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, 1831-1879.
who in 1873 published a treatise on electricity and magnetism theory of the electromagnetic field. These equations, now known as Maxwell's equations, include four partial differential equations that provided a basis for the unification of electric and magnetic fields. The electromagnetic description of light, and, ultimately, Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Although most people recognize Isaac Newton's work on mechanics, few remember Maxwell's electromagnetic theories. Including the idea of the electromagnetic wave, when it comes to classical physics. What were Pythagoras's other contributions? It is interesting that the Pythagorean theorem was not Pythagoras's only contribution. He is considered the first pure mathematician. He also founded a school that stressed a fourfold division of knowledge including number theory. Deemed the most important of the pursuits at the school and using only the natural numbers. Music, geometry, and astronomy, these subjects were called the quadrivium in the Middle Ages. Along with logic, grammar, and rhetoric. These studies collectively formed what was deemed the essential areas of knowledge for any well-rounded person. Pythagoras not only taught these subjects, but also reincarnation and mysticism. Establishing an order similar to, or perhaps influenced by, the earlier Orphic cult. The true lives of Pythagoras and his followers, who worshipped Pythagoras as a demigod, are a bit of a mystery. As they followed a strict code of secrecy and regarded their mathematical studies as something of a black art. The fundamental belief of the Pythagoreans was that all is number. Or that the entire universe even abstract ethical concepts such as justice could be explained in terms of numbers. But they also had some interesting non-mathematical beliefs, including an aversion to beans. Although the Pythagoreans were influential in the fields of mathematics and geometry. They also made important contributions to astronomy and medicine and were the first to teach that the Earth revolved around a fixed point, the Sun. This idea would be popularized centuries later by Polish astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus, 1473-1543. By the end of the 5th century BCE, the Pythagoreans had become social outcasts. Many of them were killed as people grew angry at the group's interference with traditional religious customs.